Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Teach Live. Uh, my name is Andrew Roselle, and uh, each morning at 10 a.m., I get the privilege to sit down with an educator or an administrator and talk about the teaching profession. And so this morning, I have the uh, privilege to speak with Kyle Lamont. How are you doing this morning, Kyle? Well, I'm doing pretty good, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I appreciate you taking time out of uh, what I'm sure is a busy day to sit down for just a little bit and talk about uh, the teaching profession. I know that uh, we're going to dive into some uh, strategies in the classroom and, and some of the things that you've learned uh, being a teacher now for, uh, I believe, four years. Uh, but before we do that, I, I always am interested to hear the pathway that you found teaching. Um, and so is this a, a, a kid dream that you had or, or how did you find yourself becoming a, a teacher? Yeah, uh, so I is not a, a childhood a dream necessarily, <laughs> uh, I guess in, in that sense. Um, my original plan was to, uh, was to be a, uh, a professor uh, at a university of uh, theology or philosophy, and then uh, got my degree and, um, and then figured out that that came with a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of writing and a whole bunch of lecturing. <laughs> and uh, I was like, man, like, I, I like teaching, I like people, I like working with ideas. Um, and so, uh, after college, um, I, I was like, okay, I just, I need a job right now. I gotta, I gotta eat now. Uh, so I, uh, got a job at a, uh, automotive repair place. Um, and, uh, while, uh, while just exploring a few options, um, that I, that idea of teaching was still kind of in my head. And, and then, uh, I knew a couple of people who, um, who got an alternate certificate, uh, uh, certification and then, um, I uh, did, did a little bit of research, found I teach, and, and studied up on that and got certified to teach uh, science uh, 7 through 12. And uh, fast forward a little bit, and here I am, uh, fourth year teaching AP physics. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's, been a, it's been a ride, it's been a journey, but um, I've, I've really, really kind of fell in love with it. So I'm glad it, it uh, I guess, all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm curious, Kyle. You you have a background in theology, and you thought about uh, being a professor of theology and philosophy. Uh, science is a hard left um, from that th that content. How did you choose science? And tell me about like the test and preparing for that. Was it difficult? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I've, I've I've always kind of thought about uh, science a little bit in the back back of my head. Both of my brothers are are engineers. Um, I was probably going to go that route, um, I, but I, I wasn't um, crazy into it. I, I, um, but uh, but I guess looking into it, I, I knew I wanted to uh, I wanted to do something that, that would that could be really practical and beneficial to people. And the idea of having a type of class setting where it could be more hands-on, more interactive, where students are out of their seats uh, doing something. Um, I, I, I couldn't, I, I don't like the idea of being a lecture heavy type classroom and, and, I, and, um, and physics is great because, um, you know, some days, yes, we do have to talk a lot and write a lot. Um, but, but other days, you know, we can just, um, you know, there's labs where they play with Hot Wheels cars and ping pong balls and slinkies and stuff like that. So, uh, so it's, um, it's, it's been pretty, uh, pretty fun. So I, I think just first getting into it like when i started i didn't, I didn't even know that physics was going to be was going to be um my focus um i knew i wanted to be uh marketable so i got the science 7 through 12 um endorsement so uh but then i thought about some more i was like man i really don't want to teach biology and i especially don't want to teach chemistry um and uh and so i, I when I applied for the job I have now, they, they were like, well, it's either physics or astronomy. And, uh, and at the time I was like, okay, cool. I'll, you know, I'll do whatever. Um, but looking back on it, I was like, man, I'm so glad I didn't do astronomy because in, in a high school setting, there's, you know, just, it's just book work. Right. And, uh, so, um, so yeah, I, I didn't know I was necessarily going into physics at the time, but I fell into it and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'd like to say I planned it all out that way. But. <laughs> well, you know, we've been talking, to, I've been able to talk to a lot of teachers over the past couple of weeks, and the idea of engaging classrooms is always 
uh, something that teachers are prioritizing. And in, in some cases, it is a challenge. I imagine an engaged astronomy class would be more challenging than a physics class. So it's, it's great that you knew that that was your disposition and the subject you're teaching kind of aligns to easing that engagement into the classroom. Absolutely, absolutely. I do have a question. You come from a theological background and now you're teaching science. Those seem uh, not to be too political, but those seem to be a little opposite and cause friction. How do you navigate that? Or is, is that even something you think about when uh, going into different lessons? Yeah, um, I, uh, I, I think about it a lot to answer your question. Yeah, I, uh, it's, uh, it's been especially fascinating just uh, to think um, about, uh, about the role of, of just studying nature and then, and then thinking about the, uh, if, you know, if there's a creator, um, I, uh, that's one of my favorite things to think about. And, and then just studying, um, I guess, how looking at the creator more in terms of like an architect and, a, and, a, uh, and an artist and then seeing that uh, and then kind of getting a childlike amazement and awe of like, oh my goodness, that's crazy. And then seeing how that uh, kind of uh, creates an awe in me and then to think about, oh, well, has that creator revealed himself and then giving me all a new fresh um, uh, perspective and appreciation for, uh, for theology, yeah. Yeah, so I have a ton of questions as we dive into uh, just into your classroom and some of the strategies you employ. Before I do that, uh, just more of a PSA for anyone joining in on Facebook right now, we will be happy to take questions. Your comments are, are being read by our team. And so uh, try to engage us. Uh, have uh, questions for Kyle. If you're in some of our state specific pages, like the I Teach Texas Facebook or I Teach Louisiana Facebook, hop over to the main I Teach um, feed. That's where we're curating all the, the questions. So you can just go to the I Teach Facebook page or iteachlive.com. We'll, we'll pop you in right there. So if you have any questions for Kyle this morning, um, please feel free to ask. We'll do our best to uh, have Kyle uh, weigh in on that. So Kyle, going back to, to your classroom, what was it like the first days of school in, in terms of your background, jumping into teaching, and then tell me more about the disposition of your students, because I want to hear more about the, the differences of an AP student versus other uh, populations. You might have had some benefits, but also challenges with that. Yeah, so uh, going in with kind of the, the first days, first weeks, um, I guess there was uh, just personally, there was, uh, I guess, a, a good bit of uh, inner struggle feeling like, man, you know, am I uh, qualified to be here? And then just, just trying to like uh, really uh, feel confident in that. And they're like, okay, I am qualified. I, I studied, I prepared, um, I'm certified. And then, and then uh, the school that I was, you, you asked about the students, um, the, uh, the difference in the AP and the ORN level, um, I think I think with physics I, I got a, a, a pretty good set of, set of students. Um, they um, you know by no means perfect, but uh, I, I think reasonably motivated and, and respectful. Um, I don't think anyone challenged my credibility um, directly or or anything like that and they they um were reasonably uh well behaved and uh and so uh so yeah I, i'm I, I, does that answer your question yeah absolutely and and in your school ap is advanced placement what grade level is typically ap physics or what, what grade level is physics taught at mainly 11th grade 11th grade so apart from maybe some some confidence being lacking that first little bit was that your biggest challenge into the classroom? Or what, what do you think the biggest challenge the first month of, of teaching was for you? Yeah, I think just getting into the mindset of uh, leading a classroom and, and guiding activities. And I think one of something really simple is just, okay, I've, I've, um, I've got these activities planned and I, I didn't really have a feeling for how long a certain activity would last. 
and so um and some days not necessarily having enough you know and so you know you you develop all of this work and, and because i've spent so much time on developing this activity or this lesson um i think oh well it should take them long too um and so uh but then there's been a couple times where you know you plan out for this thing to last an hour you know maybe two days and then come 25 minutes in they're all everybody's <laughs> like oh, okay all right we got it and uh you know i'm just looking around and like oh shoot like i you know um I, i'm in and, and i and i never wanted to communicate to my students that i'm just feeling time and uh and that that's super that's super important to me as a student sure. and as a worker that uh oh i'm not just doing busy work um i want to respect their time and i want their time to be meaningful and uh and so i both as i would I prepare these activities and then come up short it was stressful for me to be like oh shoot okay i don't want to give that idea that i'm wasting their time but i don't want to waste their time by just letting them sit around and do nothing um because that's um a disservice to them and their time at school yeah i think for any teacher listening right now that that probably resonates that first time where you, you throw a lesson out and either it bombs or it goes way too quick and then uh, learning quickly, you need to have a backup plan and something in your hip pocket to, to bring out in that class. Absolutely. I want to hear more about um, your experiences with, with co-teaching or, or just peer teachers coming into the, to, uh, your high school setting. Was there formal structure for some mentorship or did you use any other teachers your first year? Can I, tell me more about those relationships and how they formed. Yeah, yeah sure thing. So uh, there, there was a formal structure, um, and there, uh, my mentor teacher was a teacher who, who used to teach physics uh, at my school. Now, uh, I was the only, or I am the only current uh, physics teacher at my school. Um, so it was really nice to have a, uh, my mentor as someone who used to teach at that school. That was really helpful. Um, so, I mean, I asked her questions all the time and and i'm sure i was i was annoying because i'm like I'm, every time i see her, hey we, you know what what do you do about this or how do you do that and so i mean i uh I, i'm sure i was a pest a little bit um but then um so to kind of relieve stress from her because i knew i was i was probably uh a, a bit much um i uh i, I reached out to a, a couple other teachers so um i just kept hearing a few names um just from my students like oh man this teacher's awesome like they just do so well they help you understand and so um i just personally reached out to a couple other teachers and uh went to observe their classrooms um in uh in the, the one of the teachers i'm thinking of uh, was actually a math teacher physics has a bit of math in it and you know all, all science has a, a pretty good uh, helping the math in it. And so I just emailed them and said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure this stuff out and uh, I hear you're doing something right. So I, uh, I contacted them and, and they, they helped me out. They let me, uh, sit in on their class. And, uh, so, and then I would just reach out to other, uh, instructional coach of science and math. And, um, and that's within my own school. Now, most uh, most of my like personal research is just looking up uh, other physics teachers uh, who put put their stuff out on the on the internet for free. Because I mean, there is an um, amazing amount of resources out there of uh, physics teachers who are saying, "Look, we're trying this stuff," and guys, guys and, and, and ladies who've been doing it for 15, 20 years. Um, a couple that come to mind right now is this, uh, this lady, Kelly O'Shea, uh, she's really big, uh, into modeling instruction and modeling physics. And, uh, her website has basically a script of how she teaches many wow. lessons. So she'll say, all right, cause you know, uh, let's check this out. What do you guys think? And then she says, most students say this. And then. She says, and then she like shows how she guides their questions. 
And, uh, and I would never print that out and bring it to class and say, well, not, you know, but, <laughs> but just to get a feel for the flow of class right, right. was, um, was so beneficial. And, and um, I mean, there's just so many good resources online. There's Facebook groups um, and uh, all kinds of stuff. And, and uh, I, I try as much as possible not to reinvent the wheel. I try to just internalize the stuff so I can replicate it. Um, but yeah, there's a wealth of, of, of good information out there. Uh, Kyle, your response has me thinking of all sorts of, of things I want to pick your uh, brain about. But it is interesting, and, and I definitely took that you let your students kind of lead out of what teachers you should go and, and observe, which is, is super smart because you're wanting to have that same level of engagement that these other teachers are having with these students. So rather than you go find someone you know or uh, a principal recommendation, you're going to the source of, hey, this teacher, I, we, you hear them about him a lot or you hear about her a lot. That's, that's super smart to go to them to say, hey, your students are, are loving what you're doing. I want to glean from that. And it's awesome that uh, the teacher support system's open that you could go and just sit in a class. I mean, that, that is uh, super helpful. And as well as Kelly O'Shea seems to be doing the same thing and just modeling lessons. Like sometimes uh, when teachers uh, will just take in the theory, whether it's our coursework or the textbook, it lacks the clicking of how it's applied. And so good on you to find those resources of, of showing you how to do it. Uh, Cause one of the recurring things I've heard over these, these several weeks in the conversation is when we think about work-life balance for teachers and parent or for teachers at school and at home, if there's resources out there that you can use, then that helps with your nights and your weekends to be freed up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you mentioned that, that theory and then just getting a little bit more to the, okay, well, what does this look like in a classroom? Um, I, I love theory. I love just building that up. But, you know, when, when you have, uh, you know, it's a normal weekend, you, you don't have a whole lot of time on a Saturday after you've been grading lesson planning for a few hours. You don't have a whole bunch of time for theory. You're like, okay, I got to do something on Monday. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I, uh, I'm a certified math teacher here in Texas. And when I was doing my clinical, um, I obviously had to do the lessons. Uh, and it was my class, which added a little bit of, of um, you know, strangeness to it, because I was kind of stepping in. But uh, one of the lessons I was doing is over midpoint equation. And I knew the content, obviously, I'd passed the exam, I knew what midpoint was. But trying to figure out like, how do I bring this to any kind of relevance, to these kids was the biggest challenge to me. It wasn't do I know how to write the formula on a chalkboard? That That's a, a done deal. But it's what can I do to make them engaged, to make it meaningful to them that they care about it and and hopefully increase the learning uh, when they actually care about it. And so having resources out there that help with uh, whether you're using a slinky to demonstrate a physics or something that maybe you wouldn't have thought of, you're like, oh, that makes total sense. It's super helpful for student engagement and, and student learning. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of times it, it is something really simple um and um and you, you just take someone who's been doing it for 20 years to have thought of to have thought of stuff like that you know i i know uh, personally i have a five-year-old uh, little kid who loves trick shots so dude perfect is his entire world right now but we found <laughs> a, a channel called how ridiculous i don't know if you've seen it but these australian kids they oh drop, yes they drop things from extreme high high up and see what happens so uh, the Magnus theory uh, of the ball spinning out or gravity hitting. And so I feel like even my five-year-old, they get to have these many lessons of what physics is uh, to try to engage. Obviously, he's not picking up half of the stuff that's actually <laughs> happening. Uh, it's pretty cool to see um, people taking really in-depth science and physics and kind of dumbing it down for, for layman's like me to try to understand the world and how it operates. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And there's, there's, uh, so much out there that's, that's engaging. Some, sometimes some of my, uh, I, I, I just spend so much time just trying to figure out what to use because there's so much good stuff. Yeah. And, uh, it's, sometimes I, I get, I, uh, I'm like, man, I just want to show them this just cause it's so cool. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I hear it on that one. Well, I, I got to think that the SpaceX launch is going to be in your class next year. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow, some way it'll make it. Yeah. I mean, that, that is uh, physics applied uh, to perfection, in my opinion. No doubt about it. 
So uh, some people are, are joining in. A lot of people are just thanking you for sharing your experience, Kyle. But uh, Jarvis has a question. He's thinking about uh, trying to determine between uh, teaching middle school or high school. Uh, you've only been at the high school realm, but he wants to hear your experiences and your favorite thing about teaching at the high school. Yeah, um, good question. Middle school or high school? Um, my wife taught theater at the middle school, and uh, so we've kind of traded stories a little bit. Um, I, uh, I I enjoy high school. Um, I've got uh, a, you know, I don't know how big a factor this place, but I'm I'm a little bit uh, more laid back, I guess, and uh, and I I enjoy the uh, level, just the level of, of thinking that uh, the high schoolers uh, just engage in. I, I I really enjoy that, and and I'm. I'm sure middle schoolers have, have, have great questions and everything like that. Um, I, I I like I like the maturity of, of high school, um, but you know it is it is hard to say um, what you would. Oh, well, here's one thing that is coming to my mind. One benefit of middle school is that um, extracurricular activities don't have the priority. Uh, that they do in high school, mm. whereas um, I've, I've heard some some uh, uh, just colleagues that have that taught in uh, high school and then went to teach uh, at a at our district one of our districts uh, middle schools, and uh, and they said that was one big difference in their experience of just like oh well in high school well, you know if, if they're in band and they have to go then they leave or or maybe band or dance or uh, you know basketball, what have you, or theater, that takes up this huge amount of time in their after school activities or something like that, um, that is not as time consuming uh, for the middle school folks. And I think practically to add to that, in, in my limited experience, it, it seems as though high school generally, at least in Texas, is a lot more block scheduling uh, than middle school. And so, just understanding your your disposition to you know a forty five minute class or an hour and a half class is small, uh, but it's there. And then another way I think about middle school and high school in terms of at least the core areas is middle school is the the basic foundations. It's almost like a one hundred one class. And then when you get into high school, it's like the two hundred one class where they break off science into the biology, chemistry, and physics. And so from a teacher's perspective. I think a lot of people like laying the foundation, seeing those light bulbs click on the baseline, you know, portions of math and science where you have the benefit of taking that and then extrapolating into just the, the deeper things. And that's a different type of, of teaching, uh, apart from the content, just fundamentally kind of where you're hitting those students in the learning, um, you know, continuum. Yeah, for sure. And, and, uh, depending on, on, uh, on your, um, like you said, on your disposition, depending on the, on the um, depth of the content that you want to get into, um, and uh, or the uh, breadth, I, I, I guess. And uh, so, like you said, like in in uh, in middle school, where they cover all kinds of stuff really quickly and, and really lightly. Um, you know, if if you'd like, you know that. Um, uh, I guess that might, that. Uh, that much variation like like that's awesome uh whereas in high school uh in my f physics class um a lot of i hear a, a lot oh i remember doing this in eighth grade or yeah. i remember talking a little bit about this um i remember this vocabulary word um but then just seeing all those implications and then a little bit more of the implications and applications of some of those those really cool things that you learn in eighth grade um, or in seventh or whatever in middle school. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's definitely pros and cons. Um, uh, both are a fun and, and meaningful uh, ways to, um, ways to, ways to work. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully uh, Jarvis gets a little bit from that. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I know we, 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 I'm looking at the clock here and, and we don't have a ton of time left, but one of the questions I did have just from the beginning to jot it down, I don't, I don't want to skip it selfishly is you've done a lot of work to create lesson plans and pull resources and, and really kind of have an understanding that this is my goal in the classroom. Maybe have a backup plan uh, just for the what ifs, uh, but here, here's my goal. 
I'm curious how you balance what is required by state standards to teach and then the kind of the art uh, and the, the creativity as a teacher you get. How do you go into a lesson plan or into the classroom knowing like, okay, here are my teaks that I need to hit, but also I would love to spend time on this experience, this experiment uh, and really dive into that. Where, where do you find that balance? And, and is, it, is there a tension? I just want to hear more about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, the, um, I think as, as far as, uh, with physics and AP physics, it, it's, um, I'll use that as, and I think that that'll be beneficial for, uh, for the, the teaks for, uh, for physics, uh, it's an, uh, it can fit on one page for the whole year. Hmm. Um, the teaks for AP physics are the learning objectives, what they call it. It's like a ten-page document. Oh wow! And, and so, um, with the teaks, I feel like I do have a lot of uh, creative license, I guess, in, in saying like like they might be really um, kind of vague, um, not vague. They're broad. precise, but broad. Broad yeah. is a better yeah. word. They are broad. Where I can, um, uh, there's a bunch of different things I can do to accomplish that tape. Uh, or, or to get that across, um, that I still have a little bit of, I, I still have flexibility with, with AP, but it's much more precise and detailed um, as far as specific uh, specific knowledge. Um, whereas in you know for for like say Newton's laws or uh, or gravitation or something like that, you have like okay, you need to you need to be able to know this 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 and this. Whereas um, the teak would be more broad, just be able to apply Newton's laws in various situations in real world application and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, and just for anyone who might not be familiar with, with exactly what Kyle's talking about, AP actually leads to potentially uh, college credit. And so there is a little bit more of a strenuous uh, list of things uh, to verify that they're actually getting both the teaks, which is the learning objectives within the state of Texas and the college credit. Uh, versus just what's baseline for an 11th grader uh, to graduate uh, high school. And so it's interesting to hear you talk about um, the difference of that. When you build out a lesson plan, do you start with the AP and then maybe pull back? Or do you start with the um, on level and then build up? Or is it just totally two separate mindsets when you're building out the lesson plans? That's a good question. On uh, For the first semester, the topics are are pretty much uh they pretty much coincide now um do i start with the a start with the ap and pull back or this and build up i think um i i typically start with the ap and pull back yeah because if i can explain a really difficult or get students at a high level to grasp something on a very deep and thorough level and make make sure that my learning and everything is really precise. Then I feel like I'm I'm better equipped to uh, kind of pull back and enlighten the load a little bit uh, to flesh it out fully, and then make sure that's coherent and complete. So that and then you know take out things that are necessary necessary for the lower levels. Some I and I go back and forth, but mainly I go to the to the AP first. If I ever go from, uh, sometimes I do go from lower level and then flush it out a little bit more, but sometimes I find it a little bit more difficult to make it uh, coherent. Sure. Uh, that yeah, that makes sense. It, it, just from a structural standpoint in the classroom to add rigor might be a little bit more challenging to find where that pieces fit rather than taking the rigorous one and then providing some breadth uh, or breathing time uh, in, in the on-level uh, classroom. So that, that that totally makes sense. Cool. Kyle, I, I want to remind anyone else who's watching, happy to answer questions. We're up against uh, the time there. So if you have a question, drop one real fast. Uh, I try to leave these, these interviews, these discussions with just any kind of general advice you would have. And so I, I'm curious uh, to kind of direct you a little bit in your device, if, if advice, what would you tell someone entering into the first days of school as a brand new teacher What's the best advice you can give that person? Yeah, uh, best advice, uh, first days. Um, I would, uh, 
you know, everybody's got to be a rookie at something. And I think uh, teaching can be a, a, a great career path. It's not for everyone and that's okay. Um, but, uh, but it, but, but be okay with, with, with messing up and, um, and, and trying new things. But I think, um, so there's one where I'm like, the advice is going to be push really hard. You got like these students deserve the best. So you better be willing to put in the work to be creative. Think about how to make it more engaging. Um, and then on the other side, like, like no first season that you got to really dig in and, and put your nose to the grindstone and figure out how to make this thing enjoyable for your students, enjoyable and meaningful. Um, and then, you know, you got to come out of that season a little bit to say like, okay, all right, now that I got my bearings, I'm going to kind of back up and, uh, and then, you know, make sure that I'm taking care of myself and taking a sick day if I need to, um, taking some, uh, like enjoying the summer, enjoying the winter breaks and everything. Uh, but just like while you're in it, um, you know, work hard, enjoy it, appreciate, um, appreciate all the, all the little things, each individual student, um, be comfortable with making mistakes. They're going to come, uh, you're going to fail, you're going to fail hard. Just make sure and make, make the most of those failures by, by learning from them, taking from them. Uh, and then the last thing is, uh, really simple just group your student when they come in every day um if you go into a starbucks um or a coffee shop a good one uh when you open the door oh hey welcome in this welcome to starbucks um if they walk into your class without feeling acknowledged by name um that's gonna that that's really important to me yeah. that you know that that they exist and I've, I've heard some of my students say, oh, you're the only teacher that does that. And, and I can't uh, fathom, like, walking into a room and me not being acknowledged. Like, that's, um, that's really important to me. If you don't do that, you know, that's fine to do you. But I'd, I'd highly recommend doing that. <laughs> yeah. Kyle, I think those are all good pieces of advice. That last one is, is super important. We, we collectively as the teaching profession want to elevate and empower students, all of them. And so them coming in and you recognize them, affirming that they are there to learn, setting high expectations for them, and then letting them know that you're going to help them reach those expectations. That's, that's I think, one of the most important things as a teacher is to instill yeah. that confidence and, and establish high expectations for them. Uh, and let them let them succeed and then when they do congratulate and celebrate those things and so Absolutely. it starts with relationships and identifying them so uh yeah i would say even more than a recommendation totally as a new teacher be doing that it, it's yeah. it's helpful for those students and it, it builds relationships that benefit you on the back end anyways for sure absolutely kyle we're up against time i thank you for the 30 minutes you gave me uh i i hope uh, a lot of people learn from this. You gave some really uh, good practical uh, help, even mentioning Kelly O'Shea and some other resources out there. So thank you for that. Uh, and I hope you enjoy your summer. And hopefully it's a respite and you're back into a normal class this fall. Absolutely. Andrew, thank you so much for your time and, and hope the best for you guys. Thank you very much, Kyle.